welcome back to your live continuing coverage of CE Week 2015. You're the Terrifics, I'm Michael Artis. You're watching Be Terrific, we're in New York City. I'm just going to pack it all in here. It's almost the end, so we've got a lot to get to. We've got Power Go Go on set. This is an amazing wireless charger for your cell phone. Everything you want to know about it, check out powergogo.com. Sign up for their newsletter so you can get an early, early, early bird price for their crowdfunding campaign that'll start in about a month. You have to have this stuff. Unbelievable. And uh, they're going to be on in a few minutes just to talk about that, tell you about it, and show it off. Uh, but first, we've got somebody very special. This is Michael. He's got hey. M3D. Michael, thanks Thank for joining for us. Me. And that is um, the first micro 3D printer. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about it. I'm so excited about this. You're going to demonstrate it and show it off. And of course, we've got Jason from the documentary film Back in Time. He's going to hang with us. That's a documentary about Back to the Future, probably your favorite movie, too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just it's a foregone conclusion. And uh, he's, he's the documentary filmmaker of Back in Time, and it'll be out awesome. October 21st, 2015. Well, better day than that. Backintimefilm.com. All right, so, uh, and by the way, just it's an open mic, so feel free. Mike, uh, tell me about this, uh, this is amazing. This is affordable, it's portable, it's, it's really like the first democratized 3D printer for the masses. Yep. Cool, well let me start off telling you about M3D, and yeah. um, we create the micro 3D printer. That's the name of the product and it's the first affordable consumer 3D printer. And we were the first one to come out at a price point, $349 is what it sells for today. Wow. And you can buy it off our website, themicro3d.com. And the thing that people really love about this and why it resonated and why it was one of the biggest Kickstarters of all time is it is affordable, it has great performance out of the box, and it really looks the part of a consumer 3D printer. So a lot of people say I've got the desire to make a consumer 3D printer and then they come out with something the size of a microwave and sure. nobody wants to lug that around or well, keep and, that and, in the And kitchen. it becomes expensive, so you mm -hmm. printed out this Terminator head, you, which is pretty impressive by the way. I shouldn't gloss over that, I almost did, but. I got um, lots of prints to show you actually. Yeah, yeah, show us some prints and then can we get it working? Yeah, so let me go through a couple things with you. So sure. for, for the first time at, at the risk of you know failing horribly on camera, we'll see if we can actually show you the entire process, starting this thing up, I would love taking to some it. prints off the print bed, really getting and We won't hold it against you if you fail miserably right. because uh, we know we've created a ton of challenges here, even including a non-stabilized yeah, uh, tabletop. Unstable. So let me start off with this. So today we're revealing one of the many things we specialize in, which is specialty filaments. We call this 3D ink, because it's the ink that goes into your 3D sure. printer. And we've created an entire line of chameleon color change. And what this does is it reacts to temperature by changing its pigment's color. Usually it goes white at a set temperature. So all of these will react to about body warmth, 86 Fahrenheit or 36 centigrade and they'll change to a, a stark white color. So let me demonstrate that before we get too far you ahead guys, of ourselves. You guys, you're a genius. Well, it's, you know, it's a pigment additive and it's you're not like a mad scientist. Innovate, <laughs> so what I've got here is a little brewing pot of just hot water and you're seeing that stark wow. color change right wow. there. So this is really a novelty material. It's, we're not saying this is going to change the world, but it's a great exploratory material. Sure. Maybe someone can use it to monitor their print quality or look at a garden or tell them that a faucet's too hot. But the real win here is it's super engaging for children. And that's where a printer like this is really going to well, get and its I, I like that market. you did fun colors, and I think it has to be super engaging for children because we got to get, STEM is really important. It's all yeah. about education. We got to get the kids involved in engineering, especially in the United States of America. We used to be, uh, consider ourselves a superpower and this, you know, a very big player, and we manufacture almost nothing here in the United States. Right. And, and I think we got to bring it back, and this is where it starts. And we actually manufacture the micro in Maryland. You do? We design, assemble, deliver, ship. Awesome. Like awesome. Customer support. It. Everything's Thank done you. under one roof. And I'll tell you this, we can build this in the USA cheaper than you can in China. Really? Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Teach everybody else how to do cool. that. Well, I mean, the, the key is design for manufacturability, so we've got things well, in here. Well, what's great is this will also foster more um, development in the United States right. because people can develop their products and prototype them before. Use the printer yeah. as well, sure. but it didn't make sense to us to both manufacture 3D printed parts, but then make the 3D printer in China. Um, so there's a lot of things that make that possible, such as this. This is a snap fit. So it's not going to damage the printer. That's how we assemble it quickly in the USA, so the labor costs are kept in check. Very cool. Right. So let's go through a couple things here. So the first thing is I'm using a WinBook. This is just a really cool thing. It's a $69 Windows tablet, Windows 8, 
and uh, you can get it in Micro Center of all places. And I've got this holder for it that's also 3D printed. Uh, common question is how much does something like this cost? What does it take to build? Well, you're looking at maybe 10 cents of plastic. Right. You're looking at maybe two hours of printing time. And, and you can use also Android and, and uh, I, iOS devices as well? You can use Mac. Um, we're not set up for iPad yet, okay. but um, the, the most common so Windows and this is an STL file it's creating, I would imagine? That's correct. The standard for a 3D printer mm -hmm. is an STL file. You can import open standards like STL or OBJ. Our printer does also use another open standard called G-Code, which allows you to control the individual path of the printhead. If you want to do more advanced stuff, it takes a little bit of extra setup. Excellent. And, and yep. so, oh, yeah, take me, take me through it. Yeah, so um, let's go through a couple things here. So do you want to do prints first? Do you want to let's let's do print. the operation? Actually. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's do, do that. So the first thing is, I actually took this at a couple stages. So here's a print after maybe 10 minutes, yep. and then the print on there is maybe 20, 20, 30 minutes, and then okay. here's the finished print. You can Very hold nice. um, your phone on that. So the first thing is... Nice little phone holder. Yeah, can you see that on camera? Yeah, we can see right. it. So the first thing is we've got a removable print bed, and inside there we're hiding the filament spool. Oh, that's where you're putting it's the It's actually spool. running out, yeah, so it's running out I told out you he was a there. genius. Yeah, no, you weren't kidding. Because there's no point in bringing this in your house. It's sleek and compact, right. and then you've got this thing sitting out the side. So here's what we've got. This is a surface which allows the material to stick to it really solid, but when you want to remo remove it, it doesn't take a lot of effort. Usually you get like a spatula or something and try to pop it off, and that's the common way to do it, but there's another way to do it. You can actually put this thing in the freezer and just the, the difference in thermal expansion will cause it to crack off. That's one way to do it, but the actual easy way to do it is we've got this sticker, and once you start- Peel and stick. Yeah, once you start pulling on the sticker, the whole thing just pops right off. Wow. And it's got a super clean bottom. Oh wow, it's very finished. Yep. I'm very impressed. Check this out. <laughs> so what we're going to do is get this thing jump started. We're going to okay. hit print. There's really not much to this. It's like a normal printer. Draft, medium, best, what are you going to do? He is a genius. I'm hit serious. Print. I'm not it's going to do all the math, all the calculations to optimize it so you don't have to think about anything. In the meantime, we're going to reload that print bed and talk about some prints. This thing is on Tell me to start faster. All right, so let's go through a couple prints. Try opening that. Okay. You. Wow. Yep. This is. Uh, it's, an, it's a. It's a Russian nested doll. Yeah. <laughs> so that one's a bit ambi. Yeah. There's no but other one in there. But this is cool. You. You. You basically also you've made it screw. You, yep. I mean, you've made threaded screws. This yep. is amazing. So this is a really challenging print. And what we've done is actually created the threads straight out of the printer. So the way this thing prints. Yep. If I may. Um, the way it actually prints is as a single object. So this part will print over there, and this part will print next to it. So you just wow. crack both pieces off like I showed you take and it off, go. and you just screw it on. Now the color on here you painted on, or that's? Yeah, so let's talk about the Terminator head. So yeah. the Terminator head was made by Mark, one of our engineers at M3D, and what he's done is just chosen a silver. It's got a pearlescent silver finish built into it, and I think he just took some marker, nice. and, uh, a silver Sharpie pen, literally did some work for two seconds. That extra color makes this guy really pop. Absolutely. He's a really, he's a funky model. So let's print something, how yep. about that? Uh, we already started it. Oh, so we started it, yeah, So wow. what this thing's doing is, it's really slow and hard to tell, but he's, moving down, getting ready to go to the surface, and it'll just, it'll start going without okay, us Okay, cool. Doing. How did you think of this product? I mean, obviously there are 3D printers on the market, but to say, I really am going to bring this affordable, and I can do it, and I can make it really consumer friendly. Right, so when um, me and my co-founding partner, David Jones, we were buddies from college, and we started going into robotics, and I was trying to build a robotic coffee machine, he was trying to build a harvester for a farm. And the biggest problem is, you want to get an actuator. That's yeah. a hand or something that moves or grabs, and every time you want to make it strong, you need this really heavy motor. Mm -hmm. Well, that cascades throughout the whole system. If you have a heavy motor here, you need an even heavier one here. You need even more expensive electronics to drive that. So all those costs are compounded in all of the 300, 350 3D printers that are out there. They have very rigid frames, very heavy motors, very expensive electronics that need to drive high currents through it. What we've got instead is a system that runs on five volts, about 10 watts. That's about as much power as an iPad. Yep. You could even run this thing off a battery if you really wanted to if you attach like a portable battery pack or something to it. I um, love it. Yeah, and so we're getting started right now. So what we thought was, why don't we come up with a technology where we use less power by getting a smaller motor that's you know very powerful for its size. And that's where the research for this started. And we took that really powerful motor and used it in everything in the system. 
And when you have a low powered motor, again, the electronics are cheaper, the frame is cheaper, everything's lighter weight, so it just cascades and it makes this massive cost reduction. It's amazing, there it is, it's yeah. making uh, the product, and then it, so it's, it's coming out in white and then when it cools, it goes exactly. back to its so normal color. Exactly, so we're using this orange yep. chameleon color change, and you'll, it's really cool, because you can see as it's printing. It'll start where, to change. Yeah, where was it? What's, uh, what's cooled, wow, that's really unbelievable. And how long did it take you to develop, a couple years? It actually took a really long time. So we started this project in around April 2013, in my basement and the garage, and then about eight months later we said, okay, let's go to the 3D print show, which was right here in the same yep. building, and revealed it, and we got a lot of you know, good reactions from it. I love this, this is brilliant. This is really, really good. This is going to do such great things for kids and schools and all of that. I'm glad it's printing here. You said a terrible foul, but we did it. No, it's it's not, printing, are you we, impressed? We do this like clockwork all the time now. So I, I'm impressed. We've delivered over 10,000 micro 3D printers to date the lion's share of our Kickstarter, and it's some, a good portion of our pre-orders as well. So we're wow. getting ready to be in stock and go retail soon. So on that note, uh, we've managed to keep the price point the same. We're selling spools for $13. We've got one of the only designer spools in a retail package, and our actual micro 3D printer retail box ready to go. Wow, So you're going to be awesome. able to find this on the store shelves. Can we get it in, in Be Terrific Red? Yeah, red's one of the only colors we don't have, but. <laughs> That's oh well. Oh well. Well, what are you gonna do? I, I like Can't green. Have them all. Yeah, that's We've pretty cool. Green, we have to get orange, one of these. This blue. is awesome. Yeah. I, I like that a lot. Now, what kind of material is it? Is it uh, uh, BPA free or all that stuff? All of our materials are what you call Rojas compliant. That means there's no mercuries or leads or BPAs in them. The standard material is called PLA. It stands for sure. poly lactic acid, which is actually derived from a renewable material called cornstarch, um, tapioca starch, any type of starch. That's the standard. And then there's a lot of other materials. So one thing I brought for you, which we're revealing today as well, is M3D Flex. Oh, wow. This is a much better material than the previous generation. It flexes. It squeeze it as hard as you want. This as thing flexes oh, in, wow. it's like this a stress like, ball. Check this out, Jason. This is one of these, uh, like, you stress can, ball. yeah, stress ball. Yep. Yeah, that's what he said. And now what's neat about right that back. is this. If I take this print and go like that, yeah. it's not going to resist me all that much. It'll go right. crack. This thing, on the other hand, is super tough. That is really and cool. You make be, bracelets and all yeah, sorts of stuff. Yeah, and if you're going to be selling this thing, and children are going to be using it, and they're going to want to you know, yeah. have a wearable or something like that. Oh, we got to get one of these in the office. I like this thing. Thank you so much. Before you go, I got to ask you one question real What's quick. Up? And that is, when you were a kid, did you ever think you'd be doing this? Or were you always a geek? Were you always into this stuff, tinkering? I I'll give you two answers to that. The one is, uh, what did Back to the Future not predict? A lot of things that we have today. And this is definitely one that just hit me a couple years ago. And I was like, whoa, where did this tech come from? But the other answer is, um, yeah, absolutely. I was uh, always interested in mechanical engineering and tech. and. Innovation. Great story. Else. I mean, you just start this in your basement and you've grown to a great company. You did an amazing kickstart. 10,000 units you've delivered. 3.4 million raised in, the, in that month. Oh, wow. Uh, we're excited about this. We want to have you in studio at some point since you're in the area. That'd be great. Uh, we got to get one of these in studio for sure. And uh, keep on keeping on, man. Um, the micro, what's the website again, real it quick? It is themicro3d.com. Themicro3d.com. I think everybody's got to get one of these, especially if you have kids, to get them interested. Uh, what do you think? I love it. I just wish I could design something. Well, you know, the good you, thing you is you don't, don't have, have to. Yeah, you don't have you, to. You don't have to. Number one, there are, there are these scanners. Downloadable stuff? Well, there's downloadable stuff, but there are also these uh, scanners that you can plug in, uh, that you can put on your iPad or whatever, and you can scan a person's head or whatever. Adam scanned my head and made a bust of me on his so uh, 3D printer. There's actually See, that's an, awesome. There's a new like field that's been forming in the last nine, six months maybe, and what it is is an app market where it's in between intense CAD design and just downloading a model that's made and it's an app where you can modify things. So it's like digital Mr. Potato Head, you put in the eyes and ears you want, you maybe stretch and pull on it and it's symmetric, and then you export that. Yeah. So in addition to the scanning. A in addition to the scanning, mm -hmm. and of course you can just pull stuff from all sorts of free places online. And like uh, the Padcaster gave us a design to print out for them, uh, and 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 they gave it to us. Like they their engineer did it and we have a 3D printer. So yeah, we need is, one of these though. This is awesome tech. Thank you, the, the micro 3 dcom I'll teach you one more thing I learned today. Yes. Sign language for a 3D printer. Wow, very cool nice. That? I love it. That's Michael, that's Jason. He's from Back in Time, backintimefilm.com. And of course, don't forget to go to the micro3d.com. Uh, really awesome, Michael. Thank you for Thank you. checking, uh, for bringing that to us and letting us check that out. You're the Terrifics. We'll be back with a whole lot more. Jason's going to stay with us. We'll be back with a whole lot more right after this. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>